G'day and Kiora. Altea here. It's time. You've researched your camo, built it up in layers from scratch, added all of the insane detailing right down to the rivets, made some beautiful weathering and then shot it full of holes. Now it's time to do the thing that some find the hardest of all. Put it out on live for others to comment on. Now that can be scary. What if others don't like it? What if they say I suck? Mate, you're overthinking it. You've put in all the hard work. Now's the time to let others have a look. Will there be criticism? Well, maybe. But I've found that mostly players are very supportive of the skinners on live. When we make mistakes, the more experienced skinners are normally very gentle about offering corrections. So when you've decided it's time to launch, what do you need to maximize your potential downloads? Well, this is what I do. I have a zipped folder with all of the files that a player needs to run my skin. So that's the BLK, the C map and the N map for the camo, and the C and N maps for the damaged files. I also create a series of four images that I use to help sell my new skin, sort of like the ads for it. And there's also a written blurb that goes along with the skin. So let's see how all of those things are created. First, the zip file. We haven't actually made the damaged files yet. At the end of the last video, we created a set of damaged layers. We hadn't actually saved them as separate damaged files. So that's what I'll do first. Here are my two files gr-r underscore c.psd and underscore n.psd. I open the end map and turn on the damage layers. Go up to File, Save As, and then select DDS from the drop down. I need to change the name of the file to gr-r underscore n underscore dmg damage dot dds. You remember that that was the name we used for the damage file when we first edited the BLK back in video 2. Now here's an important change. After you click save, you need to change the type of DDS file from 8.8.8.8 to DXT5 ARGB. Remember that this will take longer to create, but it uses better compression so the file sizes are smaller and they'll download quicker for the players. OK. I'm going to let this first one run in real time, just so you can get a feel for how long it takes. And just to give you a yardstick, my system is an i7 with 32 gig of RAM and a 1050 graphics card. So here's some thinking music. So there's the first one done. You can see here in the folder that we have a little thumbnail of the DDS file, something we didn't get when we were saving it as an 8.8.8.8. Okay, let's do the end map without damage. Here we go. And I'll close down the MMAP PSD now and save it. Good. Now let's do the same thing for the CMAP. First the damage file. And now the undamaged file. Then save the PSD. Good. Done. So here's the folder in user skins now. Four DDS files, a BLK, and two PSDs. Now, unless you're feeling particularly generous, you probably don't want to give away your PSD files. I know I don't. So I'm going to move them and put them in that other location we talked about in video one. The place with the research folder. 
This is the place where all the files go that I use to manage any skin that I create. Now that I've only got the files I want in the user skins folder, I'll compress it into a zip folder. Right click on it and select send to compressed zip folder. After a couple of seconds, I've got my zip file and I'll drag that across into the management folder as well. That's part one done. Now on to part two. Now this part is very important to me, but it might not mean anything to you. It's creating the screenshots that will be used to advertise my skin. This can take me about an hour, but I'll compress it down to just the essentials here. I create a test flight, then I go back and view it in replay and select camera shots that work for me. Then I use a framing setup that's part of my brand image. I know that last bit sounds wanky, but your brand image will help people spot your camo in a page of new skins. Now, some people don't do this. Go on to live and you'll find lots of people who just post a screen grab of their skin sitting in the hangar. And there's nothing wrong with this, but I think it sells all of your hard work short. You're not making it look its best. And quite frankly, I've never downloaded a skin that was advertised like that. So here's my process. I go to the game and organize a test flight. I can set up custom parameters like the time of day and how cloudy it is. For most of mine, I just want free flight, no combat. So I'll start the flight and fly it around for a bit. I first do a quick aileron roll just to shape the three guys flying formation with me. Then I'll set up a heading and attitude thinking about where the sun is in relation to me and what sort of things will be in the background. I'll fly around on a few different headings, normally one wing low and slightly nose up. I might pull a few other maneuvers too. Okay, once I feel that I've got enough footage, I escape, then save the test flight with a name that makes sense, like Vengeance. Then I'll replay it, either from here or from here. When the replay starts, it has a tail view of your plane with all of the screen info on. I've hit the spacebar to pause it. You can switch between planes using the left and right square bracket keys. Make sure you're on the one that matters, your own one. There are different camera views that you can choose. Hit the F keys to try them out. F2 gives front or rear views. F4 gives a nice passing shot. F10 gives a shot from inside the cockpit. The two that I use are F6 and F5. F6 gives a random outside shot from all the ones available, and F5 gives a static shot where the camera freezes in space. Now the keyboard shortcuts I've given so far are standard, but they can all be changed if you want to. To change them, go to your control settings and look under camera. For me, I've bound the keys that control the camera operation to different ones from the standard set. I'm not a keyboard warrior, so the WASD binding never felt natural to me. But for you, they might be second nature. I changed mine so long ago that I don't even remember what they originally were set to. So rather than tell you the keys I use, I'll just show you what they do. You can move the camera through space in any direction. You can point the camera in any direction and you can zoom the lens. So let's have a look at that. I'll jump forward to a part of the video that looks okay. Say here. I'll hit the F6 key a few times until I find roughly the right shot. There, that's a start. Then I'll turn off the screen info by pressing P. Next, I'll turn on soft background focus by hitting the tilde key. That's this one here just below the escape. Now I hit F5 to give me a free roaming camera. I use my mouse to control where the camera's pointing. That's called pan and tilt in movie making. And I can zoom in or zoom out. But you'll notice that when I do, everything in the frame grows or shrinks at the same rate. I can also dolly the camera towards the plane. And when I do this, the background gets a little bit bigger, but the plane gets a lot bigger. The opposite happens when I dolly out. 
When I track left, then the plane, which is just hanging in the air, will appear to move right. Crane up and the plane will appear to move down. Track right and it goes left, crane down and the plane moves up. And lastly, I can roll the camera for a more interesting horizon angle. So by using these combination of camera moves, I can set up my shots. Now a couple of quick notes here. Be careful if you dolly in too close. Wide angle and close up does nothing to make a person look pretty. Funny, yes, but pretty, no. Same is true of even the most beautiful aircraft like the Spitfire. So use your dolly in sparing. Once you've got the angle and background right, zoom the thing in until it fills the frame. Then take your shot. I see so many shots done by people who have a great skin, but you can't see it because they've become entranced by how beautiful the environment is in War Thunder, and their plane is taking up only a tiny part of that. So I would go through and take 10 or 12 from both sides and a view from behind and maybe one from underneath as well. Now that might take me a while as I do sweat on this detail. The second part of making advertising is that brand image thing I was talking about before. If you look at Strafe Mike's stuff, this is the image you look for. This frame that he uses is common to all of his work. Mighty Arrow's new work looks like this. Prox uses this format. And this is mine. Here are the elements that make it up. I have a dark frame with some subtle pinstriping and a 3D stroke border. Over that I have a roundel of the Air Force that I'm skinning. That has a stroke and some 3D shading and a little gloss effect to sell it as an enamel badge. I have some text here as well about the real aircraft at the top of the frame and about the skin at the bottom. As of 1.77, I've added a second border promoting what type of skin this is, historical, ace, warbird, etc. and that the skin is marketplace ready. Now's a good time to talk about the marketplace. It's a new feature of the game that first appeared in 1.77. At the time of this video, it still isn't fully fleshed out, and it wasn't a big thing yet, but it has the potential to be, at least for skinners. Gaijin will select user-made skins that will be able to be purchased in the marketplace and then show up in-game, like the native skins that come with War Thunder. And those skinners will receive some small payment under the Profit Share program. Not every skin will make the cut, though there are some rules. No nudity. Doesn't matter how historically accurate your nose art is, if you want your skin to be considered, slap a bikini on it. Same with profanity. Swearing. If you want Yippee motherfucker. written down the length of your B-17, that's fine, but it won't be looked at for the marketplace. If you look at a lot of World War II nose art, was a lot more subtle anyway, often relying on innuendo and double meaning. The next rule, no fascist symbols, nor anything that resembles them. The obvious one is the Nazi Hackenkreutz. I may be pronouncing that wrong. You might know it better as the Svostika. And it also extends to the Finnish and Latvian Air Force roundels. Even the old symbol for the US 45th Infantry Division and you can forget about making a plane for the Fernie women's ice hockey team. It even extends to kill markings. Now you can rail against how stupid all this is. That your Fokker Wolf 190 is inaccurate without the swastika. That kill markings are clearly anti-Nazi. That flying a plane with the Hacken Kreutz on the side doesn't automatically turn you into a Nazi any more than flying a Catalina painted like Jacques Cousteau's one turns you into a French oceanographer. But there are still some countries where this is a thing, and Gaijin want their commercially available product to be free from lawsuits. So... <sighs> and while we're on that topic, the other big thing that's a no-no for marketplace skins is other people's intellectual property. So no Star Wars skins. No My Little Pony. No Girls on Panzer. No airliners. No insert your favourite band name here. You can still make all of those skins and put them on live, but they will never be considered for the marketplace. 
The last and biggest problem for me is that marketplace skins can only be for a single make and model. On all of my skins, where something works across multiple variants, I include all of the BLKs and any extra files necessary to make them work. My Catalinas and P39 used to work across four variants. My 109 works across 10 variants. So now I'm reworking all of my skins so that they will now only work with one variant. But I include a second small zip folder with all of the additional files needed to make it work on other models. Now for my Vengeance, it has no nudity, no profanity, no banned symbols, no commercial IP, and there's only one model presently in the game. So I can add Marketplace Ready at the bottom of my frame. Now for the image for my main photo. This one, I think. I drop it in and save it. My other ones also have a little frame going on to make them look like images from a film strip. Why? I've got no idea. Most of the younger players have probably never even seen a piece of photographic film. It's just a quaint, arcane thing I do for my brand. Yeah, I know, pretty wanky. So here's the frame. I'll drop all of the photos I took during the test flight in. I want to select three, some facing left, others facing right. I'll save them into my management folder. And you may remember back in part one, I dumped three JPEGs in there labeled film strip one, two, and three. Well, now here's the payoff. When I save the images now, I don't have to type the name, just click, 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 done. I'll do the other two as well. Okay, so now I have the zip files and the four advertising images I'm going to use time to upload. I go to live and click on add camouflage. The first thing, the one at the top, is the zip file. I'll click here and select it. Now Australia is third in the world for internet connection speed so you may want to, uh, wait a second, I'm sorry I'll read that again. Australia has third world internet connection speeds so you may want to do something while the file uploads. You grab a coffee and a sandwich Regrind the brakes on your truck. Learn a new language. While we're waiting for mine, I'll take you through a couple of other things I do. I'll upload the photos as well. Once they're there, I'll put them in the right order. And I'll write the blurb. Now, because I have some sort of raging OCD, I like all of my uploads to sit neatly on my page, like this. So I have a particular format for my blurb as well. I have one line that appears above the fold or on screen when you see my upload on live. The number of the skin and something very brief about the skin. So that the image takes a long time to load, you know what the camo is. In this case, Wrath Vengeance GRR. Now to make all of the rest of my text appear only when you click the image, I use the tag less than sign live cut greater than sign. Anything below this tag will only appear when you click the skin add. The next thing I add are the hashtags. These are the things that players can use in searches to find your skin. So I'll put in my name, historical, market, RAF, Australia, Australian, Aussie, A35, A35B, and Vengeance. That should do it. When you're making yours, put in everything you can think of. And I might add some history about the actual aircraft if I have it. Maybe something about the skinning process. For this particular camo, I'm dumping in a link to this series of videos. This is also where I'll add info about the extra variants that a skin will work on and a link to the small zip file with the extra stuff. But of course, not in this case. Okay, finally. So that's it. Mission accomplished, as they say. The next video is the last in this series. After spending so much time getting this skin right, I'll show you how easy it is to create a new skin based on that template. Until next time, Kia Kaha!